Welcome to the World United. Welcome to the World United. Daryl will be speaking on the threefold path of Ahimsa for a new earth. It dwells on different ways we have been abusive to ourselves, to other species on the planet, and to the Mother Earth herself, and our corrective actions to bring about healing to all these domains. So, over to you, Daryl. Thank you, uh, Dalbert, and a very good afternoon to everyone on this wonderful platform of the World United. It's a privilege always to speak on. Uh, you know, topics close to my heart uh, on this uh, platform. So, uh, ahimsa, that is, of course, everyone of us knows the meaning is non-violence. Uh, to the human body, to other sentient beings, and to the planet as well. Now, uh, you know, there are so many... Um, Peaceful people, uh, great meditators, people who have experienced nirvana and bliss. And um, uh, sometimes, you know, uh, uh, they are uh, so clear and they say that, you know, I'm such a peaceful person and uh, obviously I uh, do not commit any non-violence. So it all depends on our awareness and uh, how, you know, expanded it is and what all it includes. Um, so I remember it was in 2011 when I did my first uh, spiritual retreat when uh, somebody asked me, you know, one of the uh, attendees asked me uh, the all-popular question, what is enlightenment? So uh, I just uh, thought about it and I said, uh, Something, you know, there are so many uh, definitions, but I just gave a reply that I thought uh, uh, I felt was sensible. And I said, uh, it is the stage when the person understands the effects of their thoughts, words, and deeds, you know, in the world. Uh, that means everything out of outside their own self. So, uh, and uh, similarly, just a year after that, when I spoke at the first World Parliament on Spirituality in 2012, um, my topic was uh, balancing mind, body, and spirit uh, for, you know, uh, developing equal levels of proficiency in our mind, body, and spirit to bring in the age of Aquarius. So I, I felt so strongly about that topic because that time I could see, uh, of course, people are genuine and they make really good efforts, but I could see some people are excelling in the spiritual dimension. Some people were excelling in the mind dimension with techniques like, you know, Silva, method of mind control, hypnotherapy, NLP and all of that, but lacking in, for example, the physical dimension, certain aspects of physicality. Uh, so that's why I gave that talk. and. Uh, so it's all about, you know, the awareness. Now, uh, when I say non-violence to the human body, people automatically think that, yes, uh, you know, it means physical fighting, abusing, you know, all of that. Uh, but it also includes anything that you do to your entire organism that is against its natural function. And it's so simple to understand that uh, for people who understand, you know, integrative natural medicine, it's so clear that so many of the chronic illnesses like high BP, cholesterol, diabetes, obesity, hormonal imbalance and all of that, you know, is coming from, uh, uh, you know, things that we are doing to ourselves, which we do not understand. And then it results in uh, sickness. So again, it comes down to awareness. So... A simple thing like, you know, eating too much of uh, processed and packaged food products that have got, uh, you know, preser uh, toxic preservatives and stabilizers and artificial, you know, taste enhancers and all of that. Just eating that is causing inflammation and indigestion. So we have to look deeper within ourselves, this physical body that we call the temple of the divine. 
right? Uh, uh, we have to see what are we doing on a daily basis uh, that is damaging this organism because any kind of sickness and healing is a reply of your body telling you that, uh, you know, you have assaulted me and I'm going into sickness. <laughs> you are literally trying to damage and kill me. And here I'm trying to, you know, every day save myself. So we do so many things to the physical body from the root of our food, from the root of uh, inorganic products used on our, you know, hair, body, detergents, all of that. And uh, um, uh, our, some physical habits also. So that's the first uh, uh, aspect of uh, nonviolence that I say to the human body. It only comes from a deeper awareness. And if you uh, keep yourself open to understanding this, uh, this field of physicality and everything that is physical in the world that will interact with your physical body, and then you will understand and take the right decisions of not committing violence to your physical body. And then, of course, in that, uh, uh, your mind and spirit is also there. So uh, you understand about toxic relationships. You understand about uh, disempowering beliefs and divisive beliefs. Now, surely on our spiritual programs, we know that uh, so many religions that divide people among the world uh, are, you know, a, a very deep uh, uh, kind of uh, mindset of divisive force. So we each find our path in unity as we explore and we open up to this and, you know, heal that part of ourselves. The second part of uh, nonviolence, I say, is to, if we have the intelligence to, you know, we, try, we feel ourselves, are, you know, uh, God's gift on this planet or the most precious thing. And with a simple comparison, we can see that we are Mammalian, sentient, vertebrates, for example, these are the things we can identify with. And uh, then very close by, we, are, we love most of our pets, right? Like a dog and a cat also has got all your five senses. So it can experience trauma, a pain. Uh, we've seen tears coming out from the uh, you know, eyes of dogs and cows. So we, we know all of that. Uh, and... Uh, uh, so they also go through all the physical things that we do, of course, at different levels. And um, we are the ones who have to uh, know the level at which we operate. Uh, human beings have got an added uh, gift from God, you can say, that is of thinking outside the box. That means uh, you... We'll see a cow or, you know, doing its thing, eating its grass and all, but seldom you will ever see it looking at the sky and having a long gaze and wondering what the eagle is doing for going from this place to that place, right? So, so we know that they think there is a very natural, beautiful flow of their lives and uh, they always work within that. But human being has been given that capacity by creator, you know, universe, uh, all there is. God uh, to also, uh, you know, think about and care about other species on this planet, because that is what I have been, you know, uh, teaching about that uh, we are a hand of God. And this is literally, a gar you know, the Garden of Eden. And we have been given the position of a gardener, a caretaker. And uh, our work is to see that as much of a species, that means these are all God's creations. So we have been given that opportunity that uh, as a hand of God, how are you helping to express everything that I have put on this planet, right? So when we take such a broad view, we know that, uh, you know, violence to animals is also uh, a damaging aspect to them. But of course, mm -hmm. as it's only when each of us does our journey, and most of us know that we are going in this phase of what is called the ascension. So everybody's at a different, you know, space. So somebody, uh, there are people who are, uh, have taken a deep practice and deep view and they say, we don't want to damage anything. We do not even want to damage plants because I, my, I have taken my energy body to that level where I speak telepathically to plants and they tell me their trauma when I cut them, you know. So, so then that's the trauma a person is facing then they will develop their energy body and their siddhas 
to live on, for example, sunlight. Uh, that is like a sun yogi or a breathinarian. So we can choose. It's, it's, it's according to our level of consciousness. If we align our thoughts, words, and deeds according to that, then we'll have the least amount of uh, trauma and question. So, so at one level of consciousness, that's, that's uh, where I reached in 2010. Uh, you know, I stopped uh, eating meat and fish and all of that. I became a vegetarian. And as my journey went further, then uh, I became a vegan. So I was not even, you know, having eggs or, for example, honey, which I felt, okay, you know, the bees, yeah, we don't need to kill them. And then as an organic farmer, I understood the implications of that. Because literally some of the plants that I grew in my garden, the, amongst the fruits and vegetables, they were not germinating because not enough of bees were there. And I had to go and spend half an hour in the morning actually plucking the male flower and going and, you know, putting its seed on the female flower. So I had to do manual pollination. So this happened for the zucchini. This even happened for my, you know, bottle goods, dudi and all of that. So, so it's fine, you know, as, as we expand our awareness, then we can be non-violent towards animals also. Um, one of the videos of the New Earth Summit, I gave the complete uh, full circle science of nutrition how it flows from the sun to the plants, from, you know, from the soil and all of that. And if you see that, you will get a beautiful learning of how you know, energy flows. And uh, you can, at your level of consciousness, connect with that level of nutrition. That brings you peace and you know, uh, uh, cooperation with others. And the last part is you know, non-violence to Mother Earth. And uh, that is something so close to my heart. That's why in my book, Become Healthy or Extinct, on top each page, you will see a tagline there, Seeking Symbiosis with Mother Earth. Because I knew even in 2011 that I was still in a journey. And we all are. And still, even now, I'm in that journey of understanding deeper and deeper aspects of Mother Earth. And uh, so much of what we are doing in the world today whether it is, like I spoke earlier, this, you know, city, smart city level of development, you know, which has, uh, is destroying the world so much. In a beautiful presentation, uh, I have showed that uh, everything in these smart uh, cities that comes up, like, you know, all the buildings and all of that, they only come up at the cost of holes in the earth, whether it's mining minerals, all the plastic that is made from the crude oil and all of your, you know, electricities that are generated from coal. And uh, in front of that, I have showed another model, which is all that you have to do is just collect some seeds that are, you know, fallen from plants, throw them uh, at the right time in the year on the ground, and they will, the Mother Earth will bring up all these trees and resources, whether it is teak, whether it is rosewood and everything, to give you literally almost all the, you know, products that you need in your life. Even your entire home, of course, the stones and the, sand and the mud can be from your local area. So here are two ways of, you know, uh, looking at the entire system. So, so again, for those of you who, are, who have just come in, I will say, please watch our video that's called Making New Earth. And over there, we talk of this, uh, how badly we have worked with against the natural sciences of Mother Earth and the kind of violence that we have committed uh, with her over the last 200 years. Now, with what's going on in the world now, people think that uh, we are going to be in the matrix now with 5G and all of those controls. But you learn from that video that we have been in the matrix uh, by people who have chosen to you know, control money, power, resources since the last 200 years. And we have done things not in our inner nature of peace, nonviolence, and keeping things you know, clean and all of that. And before that, all the indigenous tribes of the world, they never did any of these things. They never did violence to the human body, never did violence to other you know, species unless they didn't know how, you know, farming. You can't blame somebody when they don't have the intelligence of farming at a certain period of time. You know, they were uh, killing animals. But when they uh, advanced to farming, then they decided to you know, kill less animals and be more farmers and grow their own food. And these communities also never did anything to damage the earth. 
So an important point to understand is that we have come for a, from a space uh, uh, from these indigenous communities. And you'll notice one thing. If you see their local writings, their meaning of God, though it was in different languages, it is the same across the world because they lived in the real environment that is created by God. And over the last 200 years, we were moved into all of these concrete jungles where we were told that this is the meaning of God from the television, from the radio and from the books. And so that became, you know, the division across uh, all the things that have happened. And that's how we made a, you know, we manifested an earth that's, uh, you know, completely destroyed and damaged. And so all of us uh, are going into deeper awareness uh, to bring this back into a much more natural, uh, you know, a format once again. So, uh, so many of us, and that's our whole Earth Keeper community, we are in that space where we are trying to see our daily actions from the morning till the night. What are those actions that are damaging Mother Earth as well? And what is the alternative? How can we have the same things, but in a more beautiful and natural way? And that formula gave birth into this wonderful city where, you know, of a certain size, five kilometers by five kilometers, where uh, within 15 minutes walk, you can get uh, to your workplace, to your market, to your spiritual place, to entertainment, to products and services. And you don't require any vehicles in that community. So you don't need to do more mining for vehicles. You don't need to buy food from other places because it's a self-sufficient community. Uh, so these are all the ways that we are working out um, on how to prevent you know, further damage to Mother Earth. And that's how in that formula, it's beautiful to see that video. Uh, that's how we have come across step by step into this very 100% natural living model that we say has got a lifespan at least for the next 2,500 years. So uh, it has been a long journey, I say, for humanity that uh, we had to go through all of this abuse uh, to just have all the damage come upon us to experience that trauma to then birth uh, a deeper intelligence. Because when you uh, create a solution, its energy is always bigger than the problem. So, you know, that's what I like with what is happening with us right now, all across the planet, and especially those people who have, you know, have opened themselves up to see, you know. Uh, and the simple question I ask people to ask themselves is, uh, when I talk of everything around us, I don't just say Mother Earth, but I say Father Sky also, which means, you know, the biosphere and everything that's around. And I'll just leave you with the one statement that, uh, you know, just think about it and research it. The statement is that uh, every day, the mass of the Earth is increasing. And that mass is supplied by the sun. Okay. So that's how important, you know, this uh, masculine and feminine, I talk of, you know, Gaia as a masculine and feminine uh, part. Uh, so uh, in this, you know, uh, so that's also part of, you know, unity consciousness. It's for us to understand this entire fabric that we live in. And once we understand it, then I come back to, you know, the original thing that I said, enlightenment is at that level where you have reached, which will help you understand the results or effects of your thoughts, words, and deeds. And if your thoughts, words, and deeds are in service and in a benefit and in collaboration and in creativity to all else around you that has you know, nurtured and supported your life, that's when I think we are really living in unity consciousness. Thank you, Adam. As, as usual, it's a very deep, very, very encompassing talk. I, I like the, the concept of our body, which is the temple. I mean, it's written in the Gospels and it's written everywhere. No? But it's a beautiful thing that you said, because which I believe too. And that we should not commit violence on the body in any case, in, in any manner whatsoever. I like that idea. I like the way you connected the Garden of Eden, no? that we are gardeners and we have to take care of the animals. No? It's our duty in that sense as gardeners. 
the gardener can't hurt his animals or his plants. No, I like that concept. I I like the concept that uh, that of God. You know that um, that we are all connected on the earth together. No, and uh, as one, the earth is also a part of that. And uh, formula of how to change what you need. I like that. So that every day you you think how what you are getting. You make an introspection and how to get it without hurting the earth. Another very beautiful. Yes. Uh, you know, Frank. Uh, I would uh, uh, I would like to say one more thing in that yes. Uh, yes. the deeper yes. question that I missed was we have to ask ourselves uh, from Mother Earth and Father Sky, what am I taking? And what am I giving back? So you know, uh, we we so like we we like to take the you know natural five elements, right? Of earth, water, fire, air, space. So we like good sunlight. We like a uh, pure water. We like a uh, clean air, right? We like good soil for our food. So we like all these things in our purity. But the question is, am I returning this back to Mother Earth and Fire Sky in their purity? Yeah. And this is what modern civilization has not doing, and that is the result of all our catastrophe. And may I say again, all the ind indigenous tribes of the earth, they never contaminated any of these elements. That's why they brought the earth for the last ten thousand, or you count the number of years. If you know about ten thousand, twenty thousand, whatever history you know, and you'll be shocked that human beings have ended all of that in the uh, last two hundred years. Sure. So that's 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 the kind of mess that we are doing. <laughs> So I would say that the best thing is, you know, people. I've been sending out this message uh, in the theme of, you know, from a madhouse to a mudhouse. That's how I left, you know, Mumbai and from a concrete jungle and came into my ancestral, you know, mudhouse in Goa. So I tell people, you know, get out of that format, get out of the matrix, and come into nature and into a natural living. And that's where, you know, humanity is going to script a new life and a new earth. Thanks. Thank you.